All right, time to charge my cyber truck. Hum de dum de dum, time to charge my cyber truck. What? What the? What? What? This plug is supposed to be for my car. Curse you, Rivian and Ford owners. So we all know Tesla has access to over 50,000 Tesla superchargers worldwide. It's amazing how integrated it is and it's what makes people buy a Tesla. You can click on the little icon. It tells you how many superchargers are available, when it's the busiest, what the cost is. It even tells you if it's full and how long the wait is. And now it even tells you how many cars are en route to the supercharger. They do an amazing job. They plan everything on the navigation. So you can literally input a destination, plans out all the supercharging and stops for you, making it super easy. It even pre conditions the battery for optimal heating. So you literally park, plug, and Netflix and chill. And this was Tesla's golden egg. So I was shocked to see them open up the supercharging network to other car manufacturers. However, these days, the majority of all car manufacturers are beginning to finally adopt Tesla's NACS or North American charging standard plug. It's smaller, it's sleeker, it looks awesome. And it's so much better than their honky-dory CCS plug. But behind me, I have F the Pump Ford F-150, as well as SoCal Elite's Rivian, and we're gonna be charging it for the first time at a Tesla supercharger. So the biggest question is how does it work charging a Ford as well as a Rivian at a Tesla supercharger? Now, Tesla's charge plug is located on the left rear bumper. It makes it easy so you get back into a spot, plug in, and start charging. Now, there's a huge reason why this cable is so short. It provides a ton of power, and they made it short on purpose. And they didn't really design it for other car brands because most of the other car brands charge ports is located on the wrong side. So for instance, with Rivian and Ford, their charge port is located on the front left bumper, not the back like Tesla. The beauty with Rivian though is it is located really, really close to the bumper. However, with Ford, it's located much further back. So that got me thinking, how is it possible for a Ford or a Rivian to charge in a Tesla supercharger without hogging two spots? So as you can see, with the normal Tesla supercharger, it's supposed to charge on the right side of the car, right here as you can see with this car. However, with other car brands like Rivian and Ford, it's gonna be on the left side. So whoever's supposed to park here to charge their Tesla can't. So technically, this Rivian is supposed to be charging with this charger. However, as you can see, it's definitely not long enough. Now, I know there are rumors that Tesla is going to be inventing an extension cable for their Tesla supercharger, so other non-Teslas can charge. However, it seems kind of weird, and right now, it's not even in the works yet. So first, let's talk about how to charge the Rivian at a Tesla supercharger. So once you're in the Rivian, it shows all the information on the navigation screen. It shows you how many superchargers are available, which is super cool, and I thought it was only proprietary Teslas. You can also pre-condition the battery by inputting the navigation to the supercharger. It shows all this information. If we go to network, it tells you what networks are in the area. You can also filter the networks. So you can see Rivian Electrified. So we have Tesla filtered right here. So if you zoom in, you can kind of see all the details with the supercharger. You can click on here. It shows you how many available, 17 out of 36. This is awesome. If you click on more details, it also says which spots are available. And that's awesome. It shows all this detail. It also shows you the rate. So here is the rate right here for the Tesla supercharger. 27, 36, 58 cents and 53 cents. Wow, 58 cents a kilowatt hour. So this is more expensive compared to if you have a Tesla. You can even do it through the Rivian app by just tapping on the supercharger and then planning it and then you send it right to your car and it's honestly so cool it's just like a tesla it does say you need an adapter and that's what the adapter we got is for all right so we're going to plug this bad boy in until it clicks done then we plug it into here wait for it to turn green and as long as you have a credit card linked into your account it should automatically start charging so it looks like we're finally charging we are at 70 percent, so we're not going to get a good charge rate at all but it's definitely possible to charge your rivian with a tesla supercharger now, as you can see, Rivian's charger is much closer up here. However, the Ford F-150 is so much further back. So the Ford really has to go as far up as possible in order to charge with the Tesla supercharger. However, it can do it just fine. So now we're gonna be charging F the pumps Ford F-150 Lightning. Just opens up right there. It is much further. 
However, you can still reach, no problem. So then all we gotta do is we just put it in here and it's gonna blink, turn blue, and it's gonna start charging. There we go. So now it's charging right there. Perfect. So you can hear the Tesla supercharger winding up. The fan is on, fast charging. So we are fast charging. We are at 63%, but it is working. Let's see if we can get more detail. I know it's not as intuitive as Rivian, but it is charging. I'm trying to find more info on the fast charging. It is much more basic than Rivian's. Let's see if Ford has all the charges available. So they have the charge point. Let's see if we could filter ultra fast. So they have the Electrify America. Okay, so it looks like Ford does not have the beauty of the Tesla supercharging info, unlike Rivian. Rivian seems way more streamlined than Ford, unfortunately. I don't see any way to precondition the battery with Ford, unfortunately. And again, on the Tesla app, you can easily go to charging and you can create a membership. For $12.99 a month, you get reduced fees and you have access to the supercharging network. You can put details for for your other electric vehicles. So if you have a Ford or anything like that. But again, the biggest issue is that the Ford and the Rivian do technically hog two stalls. So one supercharger is unavailable, which is why the best place for any of these bad boys is gonna be at the end. That way they're not hogging a stall. So this is the correct way to charge a Rivian or a Ford. If you are at the end stall, that way you're not hogging a spot for the Tesla because Tesla's gonna hate you. <laughs> That's how he has to. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. So now the Rivian can easily charge there, not hogging a spot. The Tesla Cybertruck can also charge here. We still have one free spot as well. No, nope, wait, hold on. But we still don't have one free spot because we have the Ford F-150 Lightning here. It's like a brain teaser. It's like, how can we make it work so everyone can charge? But unfortunately, that's not possible, especially if you have a Ford or Rivian charging. So no matter what, we'll still have at least one empty stall whenever we're charging with the Ford or a Rivian. And Rivian did not fix this issue with their new Rivian R2. It's still located on the back right rear bumper, unfortunately, so that is unfortunate. So now we are in the Tesla Cybertruck. Let's just see what the rate is and how much it costs normally. So we have 12 superchargers. See how easy they make it? 12 superchargers available. You can click on that. It already tells you how many cars are en route, how many stalls are available, what the busy times are and what the rate is. From 9 to 8 a.m. it's 43 cents a kilowatt hour. But they make it so easy. They have all this stuff here, nearby amenities. They make it super intuitive. Now let me know in the comments below if I did something wrong, but I will say that the Rivian is much more intuitive to navigate and know more information about the Tesla supercharger than the Ford F-150. The Ford F-150, it was super basic. It didn't even show it on the navigation screen. So the best way to see more info is through the Tesla app. However, with Rivian, it gave tons of detail, like which stalls were available, how much the cost was, and you can even precondition the battery to the Tesla supercharger. So there you have it. I thought it was unheard of and it would never happen. But now at a Tesla supercharger, you could charge a Ford F-150 Lightning as well as a Rivian, and of course, the Tesla Cybertruck. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.